Thank you so much for that introduction. And thank you, everybody, for showing up today. I see everybody is coming from different parts of the country. So that's super exciting to be able to share today um, just what you know, L'Oreal offers, how, what are we as an employer, and sort of marketing uh, career paths that we, that we offer, and also some hints and tips on what we look for candidates. Um, and, you know, just to, begin, to get us started, I'll introduce myself. My name is Luis Sunaga. I've been at L'Oreal for six months now. I graduated from UCLA, uh, majored in political science and art history, and now I work uh, at L'Oreal USA in New York. Uh, I sit on the talent acquisition uh, function of, of our company in our early careers team. So I recruit for all, all, of, all of our early career roles, and I also uh, oversee some of, the, some of our main programs, uh, such as summer internship um, and the junior marketing associate, which I will go into in a little later. So again, thank you so much for, for coming out today. So the first thing I want to go uh, get us started with is just going on an overview on, on the structure of L'Oreal and sort of uh, what, how are we divided and some of the brands that we, uh, that we own. So the first thing is, uh, so these are our four amazing divisions. And the main thing to know is that each one has uh, a very unique identity and purpose. So starting with our consumer products division, that's uh, probably a lot of the brands that you probably know are living under this brand. The reason why is because they're the most accessible uh, brands in our portfolio. So the main uh, vision of this of this division is that to democratize uh, the best of the personal head uh, personal care industry, and so uh, you will find all of our products from that division in Targets, uh, Walgreens, uh, sometimes even supermarkets. I know in Texas there's a few that carry our brands, uh, Ulta, and so you you'll find a lot of of those brands you know accessible uh, in most places that you go. So brands that you probably have heard of include Garnier, Maybelline. Uh, NYX, uh, and L'Oreal Paris. Then moving on to our next uh, division and my personal favorite, it's Lux. And so Lux, it's uh, very tailored to create a unique experience for the consumer and to make, make them feel unique. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, thoughtfulness that, that goes into uh, our packaging and it's, it's a lot more about the, the consumer experience. And so you'll find these products mainly at Sephora, at, uh, department, department stores such as Nordstrom um, and Bloomingdale's. So brands that you know you probably have heard of that are in our Lux division are Lancome, Prada, and Yves Saint Laurent, etc. Then moving on to our next division, that's our professional products, and this is. Uh, mostly targeted for the, for professionals in the hair care industry. So your hairdressers, stylists, and some of these products are not sold to the consumer directly. These are only sold in uh, through channels that are that you in which you need a, a, a license to to acquire them. So brands that uh, come up to me right now, it's Redken, Matrix, and some of these brands are accessible to consumers. But the main uh, target of this division is for for those who are licensed. And lastly, we have our newly named uh, uh, division, and this is L'Oreal Dermatological Beauty. And this is uh, skincare oriented, very science-based, and we work a lot with dermatologists to understand uh, ingredients, to understand what's what's uh, good for the skin. And so it's very, it's, uh, it's very influenced by, by the medical, by medicals and professionals. Uh, in, this includes CeraVe, which you probably have heard of, uh, La Roche-Posay, uh, Vichy, etc. Um, so you know, go to going to the next slide. Uh, these are some of our uh, all of our brands that we own as of today. Actually, there's one missing, and that's um, Aesop, which was acquired a couple a couple weeks ago, uh, which is soaps, uh, luxury soaps, and that one we'll put that on uh, soon. But so for now, you can see consumer products like I mentioned: Maybelline, Garnier, NYX, Essie, uh, in Lux, Lancome, Armani, uh, Mugler. Ralph Lauren, used to the people, et cetera. So as you can see, there's a lot of brands that you might not, that you probably didn't know that we own, but that put that we do. Then professional products again, Purology, Redken, and then I, of course uh, with with our new uh, cosmetic uh, dermatological beauty, we have La Roche Posay, CeraVe, and Skinceuticals. And yeah, so like now, what I want to go through is just I'll share with you five surprising things about L'Oreal. Uh, which for the first the first thing I guess is would be that we're the number one in beauty uh, in beauty worldwide, which is a huge, huge accomplishment for us. 
uh, to have that. And so the main thing that uh, might surprise some of you is uh, the fact that we really powered uh, by tech. In fact, our CEO loves to, to sort of introduce us as a more of a, a beauty tech company as opposed to just a personal care uh, company. And the reason why is because there's a lot of uh, technology that powers the products that we that we use and the tools that we that we have introduced, especially lately. So we have, for instance, uh, have acquired this uh, technology called Modiface, which you probably have used uh, if you go on your online stores uh, and try on and try on things uh, usual, you, using uh, a, a virtual reality. So this is Modiface, so it's powered by that. Uh, so there's a lot of tools that we've that we've really invested on to make things happen, and of course that also uh, trickles down to our operations and research and innovation uh, branches that also are uh, very much powered by technology. If you think about it um, from its, from a formula standpoint, when you're trying to create something like uh, like a skincare formulation, right? So those are usually made in the lab and to scale them up to be able to be to the uh, to be able to be accessible to the mass consumer, it has to be scaled up quite a lot. And so that requires a lot of technology behind it. And in that, and in that regard, um, we really put a lot of emphasis on innovation. And so as you can, uh, as you can imagine, like I said, uh, skin, the formulating skincare um, fragrances and, and everything that we use on our bodies requires a lot of work and a lot of innovation. Because of course, this is something that we that we put on our faces, that we put on our bodies. So it, we have to be very careful about, you know, the formulas that we use, the the ingredients that we use. And so we have scientists working there um, in and across all of our facilities. So we have 20 research research centers worldwide. We have uh, over 517 patents that we file every year. And we have over 4,000 uh, RNI experts. And this includes actual scientists and people who have a PhD level education. So it's, it looks very much like a your traditional scientific lab. So uh, why I really want you to get from this too is that you know not, not, we just we don't just sell uh products we're also very much a company that uh, has a place for most most people most careers and um science is it's a big thing for us and then moving on uh for our third uh fun fact it's uh that we really push for sustainability we really uh that's something that our operations team is very much uh focused on, especially, you know, with the current climate change issues that we face every day, every day, being such a large corporation is, uh, it's our response, it's our responsibility to, to take care of our planet. And, you know, it's just so to give you some, some quick facts, 50% uh, of our ingredients are sourced sustainably. Uh, we, we have, we are committed to restoring uh, Greenland, so we have uh, over a million hectares already restored, um, which and we plan to increase that as well. Um, so we have forty one over forty one thousand employees that have taken green steps or green test training courses, and we actually achieved carbon neutrality here in the U.S. in September of two thousand twenty one, three years before our goal, and our and we aim to achieve this also across uh, all of our locations in the world by uh, 2025. And it seems that we, and we're in track of doing that. So that's something that we're really proud of. And uh, contrary to popular belief, we do not animal test uh, and we haven't done so since 1989. And all the brands that we acquire that had done it, we uh, they have adapted to how we do our testing. Uh, another thing is gender balance for us is very important to have um, diversity of uh, and and that includes of not just uh, ethnically but also gender, uh, socioeconomic and all those buckets. And so, for instance, one of our biggest accomplishments has been the that we were have been featured in the Bloomberg Gender Equality Index five years in a row. Um, in fact, and for us, it's almost the opposite in a way where we over index in 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 women, which is a good thing, obviously, because you know we're pushing for that um, inclusion of of women and and to lower that gender gap. And so we're doing a great job at the, at this. And so now it's now we're, we're at this point trying to also include uh, men so that they also feel included into in the company. There's a huge, I would say uh, misconception that beauty is just for women, and that's not the case. You know, there's space for everybody here, 
And so, as you can see, 45% uh, of key positions are held by men. 59% uh, of our international brands have female managing directors. So you definitely will see a lot of diversity here in terms of gender. And, you know, just to add on to that, uh, we really, really believe that diversity bring is the best accelerator and it brings and brings a different perspective. And so for us to keep growing, it's important that we, that our, especially being a global company, that we reflect the global population and, and that, you know, innovation can only come when we have uh, this diversity in our employee. And because we also, of course, serve a huge diverse uh, population of consumers. So, of course, uh, we as the creators of these products, uh, we have to reflect our consumers as well. And just some quick, quick facts. Uh, we are present in 150 countries. We have 20 research sites. Uh, we achieved $31 billion in sales as of last year. We employed over 8,500,000 employees. We own 35 global brands. We invest a billion dollars every year in R&I. We have 39 plants across the, across the globe. Uh, and again, we have over 500 billion uh, registered patents in 2021 and an 80.8% uh, in sales growth. So it's definitely, um, you know, as the economy moves, we certainly are doing really, really well despite, you know, all the constraints in the outside world. And so now I want to take you on, now shift, shifting back to, you know, what the employees are saying. So I, we prepared this video for you to hear what are some of the employee testimonials and, and for them to share, you know, what what gets them up uh, and, and motivates them to come back to come to work and why they stay at L'Oreal. And because one of the things that you'll, that you'll see if you, for instance, go on LinkedIn and search, you know, uh, our, you know, anybody that works at L'Oreal, you'll see that everybody here stays for a long time. So I would love to show you some of their testimonials. Beauty is something that's prehistoric. It's emotional. It's a central part of humanity and who we are. And yes, we're a business, but we're, we're touching on that in a very emotional and intrinsic way. We're here to build empowerment and confidence and have people feel good in their day to day. The culture at L'Oreal, people are really driven to improve. We have a mantra, break the autopilot. And we really mean that question what you're doing to make it better. My favorite part of the job is really the people. The people. The people. The people who I work with inspire me every day to bring my best self. We have a really great dynamic. And it doesn't feel like coming into work every day is a job. Find your people. Find your purpose. That purpose is directly translated to finding happiness here at L'Oreal. But the, the free goods allowance, I think, doesn't yeah, that, that well. so. And across the organization, we have employee think tanks to really celebrate the diversity that is around us. You don't have to fit any mold that you bring who you are, your most authentic self, and they love it and they take you, they take it at face value. We all come to work every day focused on what our tasks are at hand. And it's important to take a step back and realize we're creating beauty that moves the world and we should enjoy doing it. I'm a consumer of beauty products. They're very important to me and to be part of it on a larger scale makes me excited for what's to come so yeah this is some just some of the testimonials that we have and you know every time you ask a l'oreal employee what one of the reasons that one of the most common answers that you'll hear is people love working here because of the people and so for instance one of our main mantras is the people um are, are my people my purpose which you probably can see here behind me um so that's something that we really we, we're definitely uh uh people run organization, people centric organization, just like we are, just like we are very consumer centric. We're also very employee, uh, employee oriented. Uh, you'll see that nothing can get, can really get done uh, here on your own. You, you always have um, to collaborate with others. There's a lot for being, you know, for being such a big company, we rely a lot on, we don't rely a lot on systems that are in place, but rather in teamwork. And so you always see that the offices are really lively. There's uh, always, you know, this energy that is great, very fast paced, uh, always something going on. And it's super, at least uh, from my own personal experience, it's super energizing and engaging, which is something that I truly enjoy. 
Uh, contrary to popular belief, it's not like the level where it's proud when you go in and everybody's like square button up. Uh, you're allowed to have fun and to express yourself in, in any way you want, as long as, of course, it's not uh, inappropriate. So um, we operate mainly from two of our head from two headquarters. So the first one is Hudson Yard. So you can see some of the pictures up there. It's a beautiful office, definitely New York vibes, I will say. Very in this in this case, it does give a little bit of uh, Devil Wears Prada uh, vibe, but it's it's really beautiful. We have an amazing view. We have all sorts of amenities here. Uh, we have wellness rooms. We have uh, we have an amazing cafeteria, a balcony where you can uh, eat or work from. Uh, we have a lot of rooms. We have free snacks. Uh, we have Thursdays our specialty day, so there's someone with a little car coming in, either giving out ice cream or or cupcakes for free with a little song it's pretty fun um so yeah we there's the offices are always lively and this is our new headquarters that we opened up last year in LA uh very different as you can see it's definitely gives those uh west coast southern california vibes so very much green there's uh it's open spaces uh, a lot of natural light uh so very very california like and this one just like uh, our office here in new york includes all the amenities that I told you about and all those perks. So definitely coming to the offices, it tends to be fun. We operate in a hybrid uh, hybrid environment and I'll go a little more into detail, but sometimes, you know, uh, when I, especially me living in New York, sometimes, I mean, my office looks a lot better than, uh, the office looks better, uh, a lot better than my apartment. Sometimes come, it's so motivating to come here just because of how beautiful and uh, it, it is. So now moving back, moving on, I want to show, uh, you know what? What's Market in L'Oreal? Some also some of the programs that we that we offer. So here we have an overview. Uh, depending on on what year you are. So for uh, I know most of you are are seniors, and I believe maybe some juniors. Uh, so but just to go over holistically, freshmen we have uh, L'Oreal Brandstorm, and actually Brandstorm is open for everybody, uh, no matter your your year. And this is uh or uh, this is a a competition where you team up with. Uh, somebody of of your choosing and then you create a project and then you present it and then if you win you're if you're able to present this to senior leadership in this huge conference in Paris and if you win then you get the, like, that product you actually help you get an internship and you actually help um, bring that idea to life uh, for sophomores we have our diverse leaders fellowship which I co-led along with my one of my colleagues it's a virtual program for that is aimed to upskill um, diverse talent and that uh, those folks who stay during the program is uh, all virtual again. Uh, they they have a priority into our summer internship. Our summer internship is our most competitive, uh, biggest program that we offer. It, we get over, gosh, over 50,000 applicants every year and we only take about 150. So it's very competitive. So the fellowship, fellowship is a good way to skip, skip the line in a way. And then for seniors, uh, we have uh, the management training program. Now this one, has, we don't accept external candidates anymore. We only take those who come from the summer internship or the junior associate program, which, are, which is a program that I'm going to focus in on. And so the junior associate program is what, how, most, how we get most of our early talent coming out of college. So in order, in order to be eligible, you need to be, uh, sorry, I moved to the other slide, but you need to, you need to have graduated within a year. And I'll go more more into detail into what that is, but before we get to that, I want to I want to go over into what how marketing looks like at L'Oreal. So we have I would say four pillars. Um, the first one will be DMI, which stands for something in French that we, here in the US we haven't quite figured out what it is, but um, it's in, it's in simple terms, it's global marketing. And so here, this is a very entrepreneurial, very creative space, and we have uh, there's a lot of idea innovation in it. There's global strategy. There's uh, they work a lot with the labs with packaging design. Uh, they really support the ideation and development of new products and innovations for the for, for our future. So uh, they really close. They really work closely with uh, with all of our marketing teams uh, in the U.S. and specialty as well. And if I could give an example of what global marketing is, if you were thinking of um, you know, an orchestra, for instance, uh, our global marketing would be would be Mozart who writes the song. Then we have uh, U.S. marketing, and so this is 
the job of the U.S. marketing is to develop and execute uh, the idea and of the of the global team. So in this case, that would be you know an orchestra again. That would be the conductor, right? So they're the ones who execute it, who tailor that uh, strategy into the U.S. And it's very very much a balance between um, analytics and creative. So things that they work on is on a 360 go to market strategy, consumer and competitor insights, uh, retail merchand merchandising strategy, promotion and sales. So it's it's a very it's a very definitely a, it's a lot different than than you know than global marketing, but it's also because it has that component of analytics and creative. It's something that is super balanced. So uh, for at least to me, that's probably my my favorite my favorite one. Then we have digital analytics. So this is more very technical, very data driven. So it's data analytics, things like e-commerce, uh, CRM, which is customer relations management, digital and web search strategy. So definitely very technical for those who like mo more numbers and, and more of the analytical side of, of marketing. Uh, digital, it's, it's for you. Then we have specialty and this is uh, the newest one and it's certainly growing. And this is where uh, brand awareness comes into place, influencer relations, social media and content creation, communications and PR. And so definitely very creative as well. So these are our four, our four main pillars of marketing. And, and of course, uh, our junior marketing uh, asso associate program offers positions across all of these. And also something that you'll see is that everybody tends to jump around these different pillars and different uh, focus of marketing. So it's very, it's very encouraged here at L'Oreal to move around to different things so that you can gain um, uh, exposure on different aspects of marketing. And that's just one. You can certainly focus on one, but most people, most people at L'Oreal have had experience with at least several of these. And so what the junior associate program is, uh, in a nutshell, it's a 12 month uh, junior associate uh, the junior associate, associate program, sorry, it's a 12 month internship. It is paid. So the range as it stands right now is uh, $26 to $32 an hour, uh, depending on your experience and location. Uh, and so the main goal of this is, uh, is to build a foundation and enhance your knowledge in a, in a fast paced enhanced environment across uh, very specific functions. And like I mentioned, positions open up throughout all of these marketing pillars that I mentioned previously. And you're able to, again, if you start in one, you can also pivot to a different one in the future. Uh, the main thing to know here is also that during during the you, during your 12 month experience, you, you'll be working on a, on strategic project related to your business that you then present to us. And then uh, you also, that would determine how you move on to the next step. And what that next step looks like, it's either if you want to do, um, I'll go back in the slide here. If you want to go to this specialty side, then you will go into an assistant manager role. And if you want to do anything of the rest, the other three pillars, DMI, US marketing or digital analytics, then you will go into our marketing uh, uh, trainee program. And our marketing trainee program is, it's also 12 months, but this is a full, consider a full-time permanent position. And it's more of an accelerator training that will get you to an assistant manager of, uh, of, a, of any of these pillars. In, in just a year where if you were to apply to an assistant manager level role in, in these areas of marketing, it, which you typically, it typically requires three to five years. So yeah, of course, you know, uh, once, and also we have in different function areas too, not just marketing, we also have in sales, education and human resources. So for those who, are might, who might be interested in things that are beyond marketing, uh, certainly we offer this, uh, this program in other functions too. Um, so yeah, and then we have here we have here a, a, a QR code that you can scan that will get you to our careers page. Uh, so today we are, we have a few junior marketing associate roles open, uh, and so I would encourage you to always monitor that career site. Uh, roles open up all the time on a rolling ba on on base on a need to basis. So every time there's an opening, they open up throughout the year, and so you're able to apply. It's not necessarily on a rolling basis where you just have a timeline to apply. Uh, but positions open all the time uh, throughout the year. And of course, once we get to the q and I'll, uh, I'll respond to any questions that you might have specifics to, specifically to this program. So now what are we looking for? So the main thing is uh, we really emphasize these five dimensions of potential on every candidate. We understand that, of course, 
you coming out of college, you don't have all the experience in the world and we don't expect you to. So I would say L'Oreal, we very much operate in a, in a potential basis. So we really look for people who have potential and that we can invest in. Uh, so experience takes a, takes very much a second, uh, uh, goes to a little bit to the back in a way and potential is something that we really look for. And so how potential, how we gouge the potential in our candidates is through these five uh, dimensions of potential. So the first one being ambition. And so these people are, these are folks who, think, who can think big and ahead and who have high ambition and goals for themselves and not just for youth, for, for ourselves, but also for the company too, for whatever team you're in that this is something that we really we really love people thinking big thinking you know big picture thinking about what's next and always being a step ahead but of course you know having that humility as well about it and be open to 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 output from others we the second one is resilience and this is super super important for us and so we really love people who who have an ownership mindset mind, mindset and who have a sense of purpose and personal values that uh, that you have that you're very much have that grit that um, regardless of of going through you know challenges that you can push through them that you can be proactive that you don't just won't sit around waiting for an answer to, to you but you actually have, go after it uh, you know you'll find here at L'Oreal things change quite often it's a very fast changing uh, company and so being able to adapt to this and having that resilience is super important and key to uh, to be a successful employee and candidate then empathy, and I think I feel I feel like that one, you know, really speaks for itself. But we really love people who can listen, who who understands other perspectives and respects uh, other people, who can act, who can create meaningful uh, and and trustful relationships uh, across our company, and who who are very much people who care about others too, right? Have that altruistic uh, way of doing things is also super important. Then four is judgment. And this is people, you know, who balance intuition and analysis. We're very much a, a company that that we're very data oriented. We 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 love data, but also of course, uh, we intuition is a big part of uh, how we operate. So a balance between the two is what we what we what we think it's the best middle ground. And so people who are able to you know, balance that intuition with with analysis and and really make sound decisions are uh, are people that really stand out to us. And five is learning agility, and what this means basically is someone that is open to always learning, having a curious mind, question everything, uh, challenge the status quo, and having that courage to step out of your comfort zone. Uh, this company will push you every day to go out of your comfort zone uh, to make you uncomfortable. Uh, one thing that I can, for instance, for me uh, personally, was presenting. I actually, before I graduated, before I started this uh, this position, I I hated presentations. It made me very nervous. It was I just didn't like them. And here I was I was pushed to to get to get through that. And I also put myself to volunteer myself to be to put myself in situations which in which I could present, such as today. And now it's it's no longer. Um, something that makes me that makes me uh, anxious or makes me you know not want to do it so this is and this is true of, of everybody here you find yourself that you're going to be put through a lot of different situations that will make you uncomfortable but it, everything is for growth so learning agility is something that you know that you have to have in order to be able to, to, to succeed not just here but I believe everywhere else if you're not willing to put yourself in uncomfortable situations or step out of your comfort zone you you you'll find that growth will be something that uh, will be hard to get. So in more technic in the technicality of things, um, when it comes to resume, so here's an example of a resume, and this is an example of what not to do. Please don't submit this type of resumes. Pictures are not a good thing. Uh, they create biases. And even if we are trained as recruiters or as uh, you know professionals to look through, through candidates, picture, you know, sometimes... We're humans, and and even unconsciously, the brain create creates biases. So it's important for you to avoid that. And also, it looks a little, it, you know, it looks a little unprofessional too. Unless it's something that, it, unless it's a position that requires you to submit a picture, uh, please avoid them. It, it doesn't do anything. We'll meet you at some point. The second point is uh, keep it simple, and this comes down to formatting. Uh, one thing that 
that we see when people when I feel like some someone that comes comes out of college and has a resume with a lot of colors and complex formatting something that you, something that you probably get from Canva it shows that you don't have a, a professional maturity and not just for L'Oreal but you know if you're applying uh, elsewhere uh, that's how people usually can tell when you're not as experienced so make sure that you keep it simple keep it even if it looks boring and, and maybe a little repetitive uh, to other resumes, the, what really is important here is the content, not so much how it looks. So, I mean, you can always, you know, add a little maybe pop of color in, 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 in a little bit of a line or something, but keep it very simple. Don't overcomplicate with, with uh, formatting. I, even for create, I, I would say even for creative um, positions such as uh, for our global marketing, in which you create a lot of assets, uh, don't the resume is not a way for you to showcase that. There's always, you know, that that opportunity for you to share your portfolio of actual work that you've done that can showcase your creativity. So let the resume just showcase what you've done and and let the creativity space or its own uh, on a separate thing. Uh, keep it keep it structured too. So this is, you know, pretty self-explanatory. But you know, just start with always with the latest em em employee experience you've had all the way to you know the 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 earliest that you've done and you know, it's not just a job title to make sure that that you really are t uh, tailoring your resume to to the position that you're applying to. That's super super important. Um, I would say that in 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 terms of content, a lot of students tend to omit or separate their experience in organizations at college, and especially if you hold like a leadership position in in like a club or or a professional uh, frat house or sorority house. It's important for you to actually include that in your experience since you don't have since if you especially if you don't have a lot of internships that you've done uh paid internships that is then you know make sure you include them in the in the work experience uh uh subtitle and because at the end of the day there are skills that you have learned there that are transferable to the position that you're applying to and and it's still at the end of the day even even if you might not have gotten paid or was an official job you still very much gain important skills that you should definitely showcase front and center uh, one on another thing, don't don't do too much detail. Um, of course, it's all about you and be professional. One thing uh, with resumes that I would say is uh, there's this structure method called XYZ. I don't know if you heard of it. Uh, if not, I would suggest you uh, search it online. There's a lot of good TikToks and and YouTube videos and and blogs written about about that method. And it's basically a way for you to format your bullet points. And so what that does is that it, it sort of helps you um, summarize, you know, what what some of the things that you've done, because sometimes it can be a little hard to, you know, especially if you've done a lot of work, like, okay, how, how can I simplify this and just showcase what matters? And so this XYZ method, it's a good way for you to format your bullet points. Uh, the main the main thing is something, like it, for instance, if you had experience in customer service, you don't say, oh, uh, provided customer service. You can say something something such as, Increased uh, the store ratings by three stars by by uh, by providing customer service to over fifty people daily. So you see how that sounds a lot more a lot more um, professional, a lot more meaningful. So even for your retail experience, especially if you're coming into into marketing, uh, working in retail is something that um, will be very beneficial, especially as you look back. Uh, in fact, one of our rotations for Mart for our management trainee program is we put people management trainees to go into the field, into the stores, and actually basically work retail for a bit, but with a different lens this time. So if you're going into marketing, especially into a, a market uh, into retail relations and, and marketing that is more into like the executional side, uh, make sure that you reflect on your on your experiences working in retails and selling because that's very meaningful experience that will help you that you might not see the value right now but you will definitely see it uh looking back then when it comes to the interview and i think even more than the resume i mean the resume i feel like that's something that might be even if you do it perfectly it might be a little bit out of your hands in a lot of ways i feel like interviews where you have the most control over how how it goes uh, and that's where you have the most influence in getting that job. And I think if, if there's any, if there's, if we have, if we were to divide the effort that you put or the time, the amount of time that you put onto your resume and an interview, I would say that once you have that resume, put all the effort you can in the interview, really study that because it really, it really makes a difference. 
uh, sometimes there are two candidates that might be equally uh, qualified to do the job, but maybe might might, candidate two is even more qualified, but just because of those interview skills are not necessarily very um, developed, they can lose out on that opportunity even though they would have done a lot better. So just some tips that I would love to use specific to L'Oreal. It's knowing the difference between L'Oreal USA and L'Oreal Paris. So L'Oreal USA is the company. It's a subsidiary in the United States. L'Oreal Group is the, the company as a whole. Uh, but L'Oreal Paris is just the brand, right? Like the, the, the cosmetics brand that you see on, on Ulta or Target or Walgreens and, or whatnot. That's, that's the brand. It's not the company. So make sure that when you, if you if you are interviewing for one of our positions, that you know the difference between the two. Uh, be yourself. Of course, you know we be always professional, but we want to see your uh, personality come through, and uh, even you know especially that passion. If you make sure that you are able to showcase your personality in some way, uh, even if you're you know even if you're very upbeat or, or, or maybe a little more mellow, but make sure that you still showcase your passion and that you're still being true to yourself. Uh, why L'Oreal? So this is a, a question that you not only will hear um, here in this company, but across anywhere you interview, it's, it's why. And I think one of the things that I've seen, especially when I, when I interview people, is that sometimes they miss the mark in that question. It's important for you to do a lot of research on the company and be true to yourself as to why you're applying here. And I think for companies like this, which are more a little more famous that everybody knows, um, I really, for me, candidates that stand out are not the ones that are saying, oh, I, I want to work here because I love uh, I love Maybelline mascaras or I love uh, you to the people uh, cleansers. Like that's not everybody that applies here loves in some in some capacity um, our products. So go beyond that, right? Go beyond that and tie it back to something more personal to you, something that it's more truthful to you. Uh, there's a lot of resources that we have on LinkedIn, for instance, videos um, on employee testimonials, and of course our, our page, uh, there's uh, the about and well, and uh, some of our values and things of that nature. So make sure that you find you you look into that and see what resonates with you and provide that answer, right? So something, something that is a little more uh, beyond the superficial, uh, connected to you to create that personal, uh, touch. I think that's super, super important, and and it really makes someone someone stand out. Uh, manage your environment. That just means you know that everything around you is clear. That the audio is coming on through. That is, there's not a lot of noise. If uh, if uh, I mean, when it comes to backgrounds, I I personally don't care if you have a background or not, or if it's blurred as long as you know your background seems uh, appropriate. Know the job description. This is also super important. I think. This is also, if I had to summarize, that's probably um, besides, you know, why L'Oreal, I think this is the second most important point and really study that job description and what the role entails, what 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 they're looking for. Uh, really memorize that, uh, or perhaps not memorize, but get the idea, the main idea that, that the job description is trying to convey. Uh, if there's mentioning of platforms or programs or, or campaigns, make sure that you further your search into, okay, so they're mentioning this, uh, this campaign um, that I will be working this campaign. Let me look it up and see what that entails. And so something that, and also tie it back to your skills, tie it back to, to your, how, if, how would you do in, in this role as well? Uh, something that I like doing when I, when I was applying for jobs was to, I would take a screenshot of, of the job description in, in my iPad and I have a, I have a pen. So what I would do is I would put it next to my resume and then I would color code uh, my resume bullet points and like what scale that was entailing and then and then tie it back to, to the job description so that when somebody asks me a question, I could instantly um, tie everything together and give a very uh, strong response. Uh, it's more than your resume and something that that it's also important to know is that when we're interviewing you, we want to know, you know, the nuances on, uh, on you as a person and on your experience as well. So it's not super helpful to just uh, repeat what your resume is stating because of course we've read your resume. We know what that says. So we, and the reason why you're in the call is because we want to hear more of that. So make sure that when you, when someone asking you is asking you a question that you also respond with, with a specific example. 
uh, hiring managers here, I've sat on, on a lot of interviews uh, with the hiring managers, which is usually the most important interview. And they always love those candidates who are asking, who are giving a specific example. If you put that you worked on X project, be ready to give an example of, okay, this is what I did exactly. This were some of the learnings that I, that I got from it. And always give specific examples of, uh, and so before you come into the interview, make sure that you have a few, uh, maybe examples already written down on, on, and what can, what, what do they demonstrate? And always, again, tie it back to the, to the, to the role. Uh, prepare questions. Also, this is super important. Uh, I, a few months ago, I had, I was interviewing somebody and she was, throughout the interview, she was okay. Uh, she, you could tell she was a little nervous, which I take into account. Uh, but she wasn't the strongest one up until I asked uh, if she had any questions for me. And she asked some of the most meaningful, thoughtful questions someone had ever asked me. And that really made me stood out. And just because of, because of how purposeful and, 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 and great her questions were, I, I just moved her to the next round, which I wouldn't have done had she not prepared such good questions. So I think you can always, you know, think about what, Think about meaningful questions that can gouge um, how we are as an employer, because at the end of the day, you're also um, assessing us, right? It's, it's a two-way street. You're also assessing us as, as an employer. And so it's good for you to ask very complex questions, just like we are asking you complex questions. It's more than okay for you to do the same, uh, because if if, I can't, if if us cannot respond to you with meaningful answers, then we're probably not the best employer, right? So we definitely something, you know, keep your money with your mouth is. So we certainly want people that, that ask these meaningful questions. And I think that when you ask questions, think about how you can also tap into someone's, um, into someone's, you know, humanity in a way. I think that when you make it a little more personal, it, it, it tends to resonate more with, with, with the person that you're talking to. And so when you think about questions that you want to ask, make sure you really think about how you can tap into, into into this and make it a little more personable and more more unique. And there's all sorts of examples that you can you can find online these days. So I think um, so. Just make sure that you just tailor it to to the position and and I, and that will take you very far. Trust me. Uh, also, one thing it's okay to say I don't know. Uh, I, we we know when you don't know and you're trying to make up an answer. And I feel like that looks a lot worse. I had an example, uh, I was sitting on an interview and this was, I was just sitting there, I was just uh, shadowing my colleague and he asked a very basic question to, to this candidate. And it's why, what, why, why was she, what was one campaign? She was applying for a marketing role in, in, in fragrance. And, and he asked her why, um, what campaign had, or what, what kind of campaigns did she knew that uh, stood out to her and she didn't do her research she didn't know what products they are the, the the brand that she applied to offered and so she pretended that her screen went dark and that she was dropped out of the call and then when she came back she gave a very uh, mediocre answer and it was clearly that she didn't know and so she had to come up with the solution and, and perhaps google something really quick so make sure you don't do that. It comes as in genuine and not professional. It's better to say, you know, uh, I I'm not sure. I, I I don't know. I'm not sure of this answer, but I can. But I would love to get back to you if it's something very specific or if it's a situational question uh, of like, tell me a bit about an example where you deal with I don't know ambiguity. Don't say. Don't make something up. Say, you know what? I haven't dealt with this, but this is how I would do it if I was in 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 the position. This is how my so explain your thought process of how would you do it if you haven't done it. So make sure that you stay genuine. I think that's uh, that's something important. In my case, uh, one of my, the questions that they asked me when I was interviewing for this position is if I knew how to do pivot tables on Excel. And I didn't. And my honest answer was, no, I don't know, but I'm more than willing to learn. And I, I, I'm a quick learner and I'm, I'm more than comfortable doing it. And here I am. Uh, take notes. That's super important, especially when you're talking to the first, in the first round of interview, Take as many notes as you can so that, so that when you move, you can move to the second round, uh, you can bring up those insights that you learned from the first interview and you can tie it all back and it's more of a conversation. I think the best interviews you'll find that are, the, the best interviews that you're going to have are going to be more of a conversation as opposed to uh, asking a question and you giving an answer. It's more of a two-way street, just conversation. And I think 
when you are prepared with notes from the previous in, uh, interview and you have already that context, it's a lot easier to have that conversation. Uh, be positive, of course. And yeah, so that's basically uh, my presentation on L'Oreal. Hopefully you got good insights out of it, but of course, you know, now I wanna take it to you and, ans and answer some of your questions. So feel free to put them in the chat and I'll try to get through as, as many as possible. We still have a few minutes, so uh, I'll definitely be able to answer a few. Okay, so the first one, this is a really good question. So uh, they're asking, thank you for taking the time to speak today. I was wondering if you could speak on how would you see, uh, how you see L'Oreal Group evolving in the five, 10 years and how a person in a GMA position aids in that evolution. I love this question. I actually tend to ask something similar in my interviews and or when I meet with somebody more senior. Um, the way I would see it is, I mean, as an employer, certainly uh, growing, getting more, getting that more diversity, especially when it comes to gender, we do have that area of opportunity. So certainly, uh, you know, having having more having more gender diversity would be would be great. Or you know, tapping into that male side. When it comes to the business, um, I think there's a lot more emphasis now on on online uh, platforms and online tools, right? So right now the company is looking a lot into, into the metaverse and how that's evolving to see if that's something that we can tap into. And certainly, you know, when it comes to technology too, to develop tools that are, so that more people can use our products. Uh, recently we launched uh, a prototype of a tool that would help those who have, who have moderate, uh, moderate disabilities to uh, allow them to use a lipstick. So I think that, you know, as technology progresses, we're definitely, uh, trying to to embrace it and another thing too is that even though we're um, a beauty company I, I feel like a better title for its personal care and the reason why is because if you see it, the industry right now there's a lot of more um, emphasis on body on body care too and we that that was one area that we were missing and hence why we acquired ASOP and that's you know as you know it's uh, for those who don't know it's a very luxury uh, very popular on TikTok especially uh, soap brand and it's all about body care so certainly evolving with the times if we were too close to you know evolving beyond uh, face or then we would not grow as a business so certainly that I feel like that's how we're evolving and as a JMA. Um, You'll find that even if you're an intern, you'll be able to create a big impact on 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 your team. And so the way we the way we look at our JMAs is getting that Gen Z perspective is important, right? Of course, we um, we as a we as Gen Zers are a little a little bit of an interesting generation, uh, as in it's very unique, and we love to challenge the status quo. So certainly, we 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 love having uh, we love having that different perspective and and innating into modernizing our business. So can you talk about best way for college seniors graduating in May to network and apply to the appropriate positions? Yeah, so for this, uh, we of course have um, our LinkedIn. So you can always search uh, any of us or me in this case, I can put my name in the chat so that you can, uh, so that you can look me up and that's a good way for you to start networking it's you know just through, through linkedin you'll get we get a lot of requests of course and sometimes hard to reply to everybody but at least you know someone will reply eventually when you reach out to a lot of people um i would say that if you're graduating in may for instance um i would start applying now or you know as you get closer to graduation date so that you can uh so that when by the time you start in the hiring process you are already uh able to start working uh, someone's asking, is this open to recent graduates? Like I said, yes, the junior market associate program is intended to, to be for recent graduates uh, within a year. So if you graduate in May, you have a whole year to be eligible for this, for, for the program. Does L'Oreal sponsor work visa? This is, uh, so it's not all the time, but it's not impossible. So one thing that we uh, emphasize is a border, borderless talent. And so when we see someone that is very strong, we do make that exception. Uh, it's not the default, to be quite honest, but it, it it's certainly not impossible either. Is the management training program also available? So uh, for the management training program, just to reiterate, that one is not uh, open to external candidates. It's only internals. So it's people that go through the summer internship. That's their basically full-time offer. And for the junior marketing associates who, who after the 12 months are eligible to go into the management training. Uh, someone's asking, what's 
what skills does L'Oreal value in their employees? What quality of skills does an ideal candidate have? What opportunities do you have for recent graduates uh, eager to start their career? So when it comes to the skills and qualities, like I mentioned, the five dimensions of potential, so uh, resilience, uh, learning agility, empathy, judgment, and uh, ambition. It's uh, our, our, our main, our main uh, traits that we look in candidates. So in other words, potential is something that we really look for. What specific qualities or experiences do successful early career employees at L'Oreal possess and how does the company support their professional development to help them reach their full potential? So again, when it comes to qualities, uh, it's the same. The five dimensions of potential, it's always the, it always comes back to it. Uh, and this is across all of our levels of employees is how we assess everybody, not just uh, early early roles, everybody gets assessed the same way. So again, having those five dimensional potentials are important. And how do we support professional development to help them reach their full potential? So we are a, a feedback heavy company. So you always get feedback on, on your performance. Uh, nothing really comes as a surprise. You always have the support also from your managers. Um, there's a lot of uh, ne networking opportunities. We are heavily networking organizations. So there's a lot of mentorship too. And there's programs as well for uh, for mentorship where you where you can get paired with a mentor. There's learning um, there's learning platforms that we have where you can sign up for different learnings, both uh, live or on demand, in person or virtual, about a wider range of different things. Are there any positions remote? Not this time. So all of our positions are hybrid: three days in office, two days in um, virtual. After I apply to a JMA program, what can I do to increase my likelihood of getting an interview? Uh, I would say reach out to find out who the, who the manager and or recruiter is for that role. And, uh, you know, people do it all the time. So it's not super hard to find who those people are and reach out to them directly on, on LinkedIn. That's a that's a good way to to uh, skip the line sometimes. Is there a specific start date for the junior associate program? Uh, no. So again, this, these, these roles come out, uh, on business needs. So whenever there's an opening, it can happen throughout the year. Uh, says so the program is the, I noticed that the junior associate program is recommended for people graduated in May, 2023. Uh, what, what are you coming for those graduating in June? Uh, same thing. It's, uh, we just put May just because it's the closest day because we're in April, but if you're in June, that's the same thing. It doesn't really matter. Once you graduate, you, you're, you're eligible for these roles. Is there a limit to the number of JMA uh, roles that one can apply to? Yes, I believe it's five at the same time. But if we, if you make it to the, to if you talk, if you talk to a recruiter and you stand out as a candidate, uh, and if that role that you are applying to doesn't work out, but you're still a strong suit uh, candidate for L'Oreal as, as a whole, we keep you in the pipeline and we keep you interviewing for the other other roles. So. When you get the client from one role, does not mean that you just were done? We still push you through other roles. What is the difference between the positions on L'Oreal Career website, L'Oreal, you said Junior Marketing Associate and Junior Marketing Associate, L'Oreal will say, okay. So this kind of, this uh, student is asking, there's uh, there's a role called Junior Marketing Associate and then there are others that are that have an actual brand name such as L'Oreal for say, New Product Development. So the difference between these is uh, the, the, the one that only says L'Oreal Junior Marketing Associate, that one you're applying to the program as a whole. So you're not necessarily applying to a role specifically. And for those that have an actual name, you're applying to the role directly. How many JMA applicants are each uh, are each year and how, how many does L'Oreal accept? So it depends on the role, but I would say on average, we have, um, you know, sometimes 500 to 1,000 applicants on each position. I mean, it's, it is pretty crazy like that. And we, if, it's, if you're applying to the program, we accept, I would say about 20, uh, depending on the, on the amount of roles that we have open on that at that specific time and and yeah that's uh, it's quite competitive to be honest but don't lose hope there are people that kept trying and trying and, and eventually they got they got in considering you're also first generation do you think there's an uphill battle when applying to popular companies such as L'Oreal compared to other applicants yes yes I would say so um you know we try of course you know it's like the, the employer always has that responsibility to make it as uh easy uh, the same as equitable as possible for everybody i think that um it's it's for us we since we since we don't have that exposure to the corporate environment it's sometimes hard to stand out in in interviews right so i think that you as a first gen your main thing is to once you get that interview to really 
to before the interview to really do your research and, and research and, and listen to as many uh, people interviewing on YouTube. Uh, we have there's so many platforms where you can now go see and try to mimic that type of vocabulary and be be practice a lot too so that your personality and and comes through. So I think that piece is definitely important. Uh, Gene Bias say I've applied six times so far. Uh, please reach out to me and I can, and maybe we can have a conversation. Uh, are there student programs op open to MBA students? Yes, we have our, M we have, we have an, our MBA summer internship. Uh, unfortunately, right now it's closed, which is why I didn't uh, bring it up, but we do have a summer internship. Uh, we take only three people. So it's, uh, it's, it's even more competitive, but it's, it's there. Uh, and, you know, each year we, we have that, um, we, we open applications. So just stay tuned if you're an MBA for opportunities. If you just graduated from the MBA, we have our chief of staff to program, uh, which is something that you can also uh, look for. So numerous corporate social, uh, so L'Oreal and its affiliated brands have participated in numerous corporate social responsible initiatives from sustainable packaging to access to clean water. Are there any up on any of upcoming projects that you're working on? If so, what are some of the challenges or words while executing these projects? Um, I personally, I'm not involved in that aspect. Uh, again, I'm in talent acquisition, so it's it's different than the, the sustainability. So I don't have visibility to what exactly they do on a project base, but I know there's a lot of things that they're working on. Um, you know, again, one of our main goals is to achieve carbon neutrality by 2030. And so that's something that I assume is taking, uh, you know, the the priority right now. Uh, I would say that in, on my case, what I'm doing for sustainability of uh, what I'm doing, you know, to uh, some of the promise that we're to give back to the community, we have our diverse fellowship for one that, you know, we're trying to push for diversity and upskill those who are first generation to and to already have them prepare for when they become full time professionals. And also we for our summer internship, one thing that we have is our volunteer day. So we have all our interns um, participating in volunteer events hosted by nonprofit organizations. Do you have to be in New York City? No, again, the, we have positions opening both in 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 New York, but also in Los, Ange in Los Angeles and also in New Jersey. What was your biggest challenge working at L'Oreal and how do you solve it with a solution? Uh, I think the biggest challenge overall has been to, um, you know, things change all the time here. There's a, a lot of changes happening all the time. So I think you know, you're often put in a in an uncomfortable situation, like I mentioned before. So that definitely can be a challenge for a lot of people. And so I think the big, the best, the best thing to be is adaptable and open minded uh, with the things that happen around you. And I think we're out of time. So uh, again, thank you so much uh, for for showing up and for being so engaged with all these questions. I wish I could answer all of them, but of course, uh, it's um, we're out of time. Again, I'm gonna drop my uh, my name again so that you can reach out to me on LinkedIn, and I'm you know I'm happy to also respond questions through there. But thank you so much.